All right, welcome back from that um, entrepreneurship development and program that was put together by the Lagos State Government. Now, my guest, Waliu, is an industrious and resort-focused Nibosh certified and ISO qualified management systems for quality management systems, environmental management systems, and occupational health and safety management systems. Uh, well versed QHSE uh, professional with over eight plus years of demonstrable track record of aligning health and safety operations with established project and business management paradigms within the FMCG manufacturing, chemical, and construction industries. He has utilized his skills to serve in various positions in various organizations to alleviate poor practices promote positive workplace culture, promote workers' mental health via training and giving advisory, enlightenment and supporting overall workplace productivity. He is a management trainer, delivered world standard trainings on psychological safety and mental well-being in the workplace, among many others. He is the author of The Workplace and the managing director of Kodar Safety Consort. Many thanks for joining me. Uh, while you are big okay. Thanks for having me, sir. Yes, it is indeed a pleasure to have you on Business Insight. We're talking about him um, setting the pace and the role uh, professionals uh, play in um, making businesses sustainable and, of course, um, grow. So, break it down for me. Now, uh, we're talking about setting the pace. The, uh, an organization, the greatest resource that an organization can ever have is a human resource. Mm. And when it comes to the human resource, we're talking about human beings. And when you look at the workplace, where we're talking about professionals who carry out various responsibilities. Mm. Now, if we all agree that the human resource is the greatest resource an organization can ever have, definitely they form the basis or the backbone to have an organization that has a sustainable business over the years. So how do we integrate these factors of what makes these human resources competent enough to carry out their responsibilities? And we have observed that as professionals, there are so many aspects to our career life. Mm. It's not only limited to most of us, for example, someone who is an who is, who is a HR person mm. only limits his thinking, his scope of thought within the aspect of HR. Meanwhile, there is a whole lot to do to being a professional. Being a professional means that you shouldn't only limit your thoughts, your understanding, your framework to the four walls of that discipline, mm. quote and unquote, that you found yourself. Mm. You need to be able to expand your thought o uh, to other aspects of life. Mm. And that is why we have uh, uh, an event like Setting the Pace, which was, uh, which was uh, done uh, a few days ago, where we Okay, yeah, I'm going to get um, to that, but I'm um, talking about, uh, you know, you give an um, instance of an um, HR professional who should not just uh, limit uh, him or herself to just, uh, you know, manpower-related um, issues. So, in fact, what you're saying is that even though you're called out to be an accountant now, it's, it shouldn't just be about accountancy, it should be all-embracing even around uh, spe other specific regions that um, affects uh, your workflow yeah definitely now let's look at the human body for example mm. now if you look at our system okay let me go to the workplace now, now we have mm. uh business management department we have hr department accounting department legal mm. department yes, we have different departments you mm. know same thing let's look at our whole body mm. we have the endocrine system we have the respiratory system we have the digestive system we have the circulatory system we have a lot of system now this system don't work alone mm. They work, they integrate together, right? Mm. They work together as a single entity to form the whole human body. True. Same thing happens to the organization. So the organization has different departments. So you have to so integrate. integrate. So for you to be able to integrate, you should have idea of other areas. What they do. What they do. Not that you be a master of all. Or but still in isolation. Yeah, even as an individual, you don't only limit yourself to that framework of where you are. Yeah. So because the world is moving at a very fast pace, and it's either you join that pace or you are left behind. All and right. for you to be able to move at that pace, there are issues of, to, in this 21st century, you are talking about sustainability. True. You can't be talking about sustainability, ESG, SDG, why you just stay within the framework of the profession that you are doing. Okay, let me take it one step further. You know, in a small chance, uh, you have to be a professional first, then know how to work or interface with other, uh, you know, other customers per se, internal customers, mm -hmm. as it were, those that you have to work with. You know, but getting the right uh, professional to manage different uh, uh, aspects of the workflow is an issue. So, how, uh, how, what would you advise us by getting the 
right uh, peg or the square peg in the square hole so we don't have any issues no thank you for that question now when we look at the first thing is who is a professional i call it someone who is competent to carry out a particular job mm. we have issue of um, we have issue of knowledge be knowledgeable skillful ability to do the job being trained mm. experience mm. and being able to sustain that profession growth economic uh, individual professional growth okay. because you can't call yourself professional the way a particular profession has been practiced 10 years ago is not the same way it's been practiced change, now change, yes. so it's, you, you should be able to that. move along so now that's the first thing mm. understanding who, who a profession is mm. who a professional is then the second part is we are not talking about each individual professional mm. Uh, with, in relation to organizational growth, that is business growth, yeah. we see cases where organizations utilize people or professionals who do not understand the metrics of that particular role. Mm. I am more, I have more of my strength in uh, health and safety, mm. like let's say 70% of my strength in health and safety, and uh, we have observed so many things. For example, you see uh, an organization using a different professional to handle safety issue mm. and that's how you, you see you, you see organizations keep involving in accidents okay. Be, because and that will not lead to growth of the business yeah. because they have utilized the wrong uh the wrong uh, role to occupy health and safety mm. and that aspect is when i i made i give example of the uh, system endocrine system the digestive system and the likes the other time mm. the, 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 the 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 respiratory system does not report to the digestive system mm. The system does not report to the endocrine system. Mm -hmm. Now, the same thing should happen to, let's say, health and safety, for example. A safety officer should not be reporting to someone who doesn't understand his role. Okay. So, organization needs to first address that aspect. Mm -hmm. If they are able to address that, okay, this role is for this person, this is the role of HR, this is the role of, role of a marketer. You mm -hmm. see, there's a mix, there's a complex uh, confusion between the marketer and a salesperson. Mm. This is a salesperson, this is a marketer, this is a communicator, mm. this is this and this is an HR person and this is a doctor, this is an engineer. When the individual as an organization they they're able to analyze these different aspects, they cannot look at okay, who are we going to put in this particular position? Because mm -hmm. they are the one that would determine the framework, um, the job drive, description yes. for every role that they want based on their risk. Mm. in the organization because different organizations have different risk okay. and depending on the risks that they have will determine their job description and what they want that person to do mm. but if they themselves they are unable to understand who should occupy a particular role definitely it's anybody that you just see that they put in those roles mm. and that will not help to improve on the business so uh, i could all just sum it up to the fact that uh, if you put on the right uh, people in the right place uh, it they will drive uh, that particular uh, line of um, management and of course and the sustainability and the growth would be seen over time okay fine let me take it back now you, you mentioned in passing about um, a pace at a conference that you had sometime over the weekend i really want to understand why it was important to be uh, done at that particular time and um, what was the focus and what was the essence of it all thank you at the beginning of each year mm. we set our goal this is what i want to achieve for this year and to be honest with, you, uh, honest with you, not only Nigerians, because the world is moving at a very fast pace. People are getting stressed. Mm. People are getting tired. People are committing suicide. A lot of things are happening simultaneously. Mm. And because some people are not able to cope with, those, uh, with what is happening, some result to just giving up, doing whatever they can, or just uh, leaving this hurt. Yeah. Now, Setting the pace is to re-energize our interest. Okay. At the beginning of the year, there is a new beginning. Beginning of the year, there is hope. Beginning of the year, we can still achieve, especially as young professionals, because it's always very tough for us. We are the one suffering most of these things. That's just the truth. Yeah. Because we didn't plan to meet what we are seeing now. So the setting the pace is to make uh, professionals understand that, see, you are in this profession but there are some areas it's like a web that affect you being a, a professional in this mm. your field so why not all come together let us have experts who are experienced who are far ahead of us mm. let them come to discuss to enlighten us to engage us for us to know 
what are those other areas that we need to focus on as young professionals to be able to move and meet up with the pace yeah. that the world, the world is going into. So, and conferences, seminars are a very important factor for every individual mm -hmm. because apart from what you will learn you also create it is an avenue to create good connections to meet with people mm -hmm. in, and your there's, uh, there's a common saying that your network is your net worth mm -hmm. so if you are able to come to attend seminars not just setting the pace because it happens at the beginning of the year mm -hmm. and the reason why we do that is to ensure that that is where that to give you the energy from the one we did last uh, last year we got many feedbacks that attending the setting the pace at, uh, I think that was in January 21, that it gave them the ability, the strength, the mindset to be able to push ahead. And many mm. of them achieved their goals. So that is why we have it at the beginning of the year in order to create that integration for us to understand, number one, that there's more to life than that four walls. Okay. There are other things that we need to look into. And we invite experts, mm. professionals, uh, our leaders in various fields. We have uh, Ms. Lara Yoko, who is an HR, and you know, Jamie Badmos, Mr. Dakwamalade. Okay, but then again, then again, it's sometimes it's a, it's a bit um, hard not to just um, lose um, focus or lose um, sight of what you want. You talked about um, the essence and the importance of attending them seminars. But then if you are to attend a seminar, you attend with a mindset that um, this is what I want to achieve. Uh, these are the topical issues that will be discussed. This is what I'm taking home out of all of this. And I actually watched the, the, the news uh, concerning that. And one of the things uh, that, that actually struck me was that of um, local content. Because most of the times, uh, uh, I believe Nigerians uh, are actually very skillful people and they have talent and they can actually put, if they really harness what we can do locally, we can actually sell them all these contents to the world. But what is actually uh, stopping us or de deterring Nigerians from actually making the best out of the contents that we produce locally here? Now, when it comes to content, content comes in various aspects. You know, we have product and services, which is one side. Mm. Then we have, uh, oh, look, we have product, one side, and we have services. Mm. Now, uh, Nigeria is a, or let me say Af in Af Africa, there is a whole lot that we have that we sell out there that we take out there, that we don't use here. Mm. You, if you look at the Jakba syndrome, mm. our nurses, our doctors, for example, they are going there to do wonderfully well. And they have been trained here. Mm. The curriculum, the syllables that have been used to train them here is being made by us here. So it's our content. And they meet up with the competency requirement to work effectively there. And Nigerians are doing well in the global space. Mm. Now, when it comes to trainings, you know, we have what we call professional trainings. There are some professional bodies that they've been able to strengthen their own local content and to make use of it. Mm. Now, when it comes to some other uh, industries, let's say uh, health and safety where, where I belong to, the truth is that we have the capacity. We have what it takes. But we have this syndrome or uh, inferiority complex, let me call it that way, mm. that anything that comes from Nigeria mm. isn't good. That's how you see our brothers they will make a product here in Nigeria, they will put a foreign name in it, on it. Mm. So that they know that our perception is, once it's, not, once it's from the other side, mm. then it is good. Quality. So we have the knowledge. For example, let's look at some trainings that we do here. Let's say ISO trainings. There are what we call ISO, ISO trainings. Yes. Most of the time, well, all of the time, we, we train ourselves for this ISO. The trainers are Nigerians, they are Africans. Mm. Let's look at Nebosh, for example. Nebosh mm. is, is a certification training uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, in the UK, mm. but it's all over the world. Now, here in Nigeria, I've, never, I've not seen that it was done in the past, but it calls, recently, it is we Nigerians that train ourselves, mm. that train ourselves, the, the tutors are Nigerians, but we have to pay them in dollars mm. for them to use your certificate. And most of the time, or some of the time, most people don't pass, they need to do it again. Mm. So, it has gotten to a stage where we have that dependency, psychological dependency, right. that we need to get their own uh, validation 
okay. which is we are not promoting our own content okay. because we have what it takes to be able to achieve and to do what is needed of us. There's, there really is a whole lot to discuss when you come when it comes to uh, developing content locally and promoting them, and of course, the ensuring sustainability through professionalism. But time is never really often when we are talking about this matter. So we might have to bring you back again to come and talk on some other key issues. But must say a very big thank you to thank you, you for all much. of um, the useful insights that you have provided based on um, you know your work, uh, uh, your work tools and what you've been able to do over time with people. Thank we you. do appreciate thank everything. You so much. Yeah. Thank yeah. you Yeah, my guest has been Walu Adego K. He is and the MD of Alcador Safety, and uh, he's been talking about professionals, professionals, professionalism, and of course how that can be harnessed into uh, getting business sustainability and of course growth. Uh, he just uh, had a conference on. Uh, setting the pace and indeed nigerians need to know what they are worth so they can actually value themselves very high i'll leave you with that that's the size of the show for today my name is justin akadonia many thanks for being a part of the show bye for now <laughs>